when you look at their advertising business, it is a different line item, but almost all of it is directly tied to the retail business and the remaining 10% that isn't is still either currently using or will likely use in the future Amazon shopper data to help target and you know measure these ads as we move forward. Hey gang, it's Thursday, August 12th. Eric and listeners, welcome to the Behind the Numbers Daily, an eMarkets podcast made possible by VTEX. I'm Marcus, and today I'm joined by one of our senior forecasting analysts. It's Eric Hagstrom. Thanks for having me. Hey chat, thanks for hanging out. Today's fact, when you speak, quote unquote, speak inside your mind, your throat says each word. All right, how many of you are trying it right now? As soon as I read that, I thought to myself, really? And immediately tried not to have my throat say each word. But it does. It's badness. So NASA scientists have been working on a machine that can read the nerve signals in the throat that control speech when humans talk. They found nerve sensors located under the chin near the Adam's apple that communicate between the brain and the voice box. According to the researchers, uh, these sensors can be read by a computerized processor that will be able to transmit the signals into words. Bloody fascinating. And it's impossible. Stop trying. Stop trying to do it. It doesn't work. You can't not say the words in your throat. It's madness. Anyway, today's real topic, what we learned about Amazon advertising in Q2. So Eric, overall, Amazon, as we talked about earlier on the podcast a few episodes ago, Amazon hauled in $113 billion in Q2. Most of that, about half, comes from selling things on the internet. But a growing share of that total revenue figure is coming from quote-unquote other, which is a line item that Amazon breaks out. That's basically Amazon's code name for advertising. Amazon's other advertising made nearly $8 billion in the quarter. That's good enough to represent 7% of the money Amazon made in April, May, and June. That $8 billion was also up 88% year on year. So they nearly doubled ad revenue Q2 of last year to Q2 of this one. Eric, we'll start with what you make of the near doubling of Amazon's ad revenue and also what's behind the growth. We've been giving letter grades out. We gave one to Amazon in general. Do you have a letter grade for their advertising business to kick us off before we get into this? Um, I think it's hard to say anything other than A, you know, I guess A for Amazon. But, um, <laughs> you know, ultimately, when we look at the broader digital ad economy, Q2, no matter what, was going to show really gaudy year-over-year growth figures. And that's because Q2 of 2020 was the absolute bottom of the market. Many ad sellers showed negative year-on-year declines, even if they were you know, really high growth companies. Um, I'm thinking of you know, Google, for example, showed a negative result in Q2 for their advertising business, Q2 of last year, to be clear. And then we saw this huge and rapid recovery beginning in, you know, kind of June of last year, and it kind of paced through the remainder of the year. And what's really incredible about Amazon and this doubling of growth or doubling year over year is that they actually grew faster than just about anyone else in Q2 of last year. And they grew around 40% year on year. So when you look at that kind of two-year stack and what that means for their business, this isn't you know 80 some odd percent growth because of a you know, we comped the previous year, which is what you're seeing when you look at the reported results from all the TV advertisers or TV companies. This is sustained growth and a pretty significant acceleration from what was 40% growth last year. And just to put this in perspective too, Amazon is the third largest ad seller in the US or digital ad seller at least. So they are a massive part of the industry. They are large, they are growing faster than really just about anyone and at scale. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned the third largest there in terms of share terms, they are half, nearly half the size of Facebook this year. 11% we expect Amazon to have of the digital ad revenue pie in the US, 11%, Facebook 25% this year. Yeah. In terms of the advertising, I mean, you mentioned the 40% with growth we saw last Q2. I mean, if you looked at their if you look to their financials for other, for advertising, you, you wouldn't be at fault for not realizing that anything happened last Q2, to be <laughs> honest. If you go back, you know, for a few quarters from Q1 2019 and go forwards per quarter, 34, 37, 44, 41, 44, 41, 50, 66, 77, and then this quarter, 88% 
growth. So incredibly strong double digits that live pretty much on average around the 40 to 50% range, as Eric had mentioned. Eric, according to analysis of Amazon ad spending by Jungle Scout, 77% of Amazon advertising comprised of sponsored product ads versus the 20% for brands. That used to be more of a 90-10 split a few years ago. Yeah. And and let's let's get in the actual ad formats a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that's something that is actually really important. So mm-hmm. When you look at what Amazon's actually selling, it's really almost an evolution of kind of your in-store shopper marketing and trade marketing. So really what this business is at the end of the day, 90% of Amazon's ad business happens on their retail sites or their retail apps, you know, roughly 90% or so. The remainder 10 is like, you know, Twitch and Amazon Fire TV and IMDb TV and all that. But of that 90%, most of it's sponsored products and sponsor brands ads, which are both essentially search ads. They are brands spending money, brands selling on Amazon, who spend money to appear higher in search results. And when you look at what you know actually is happening is Amazon is a retailer. They're also a product specific search engine. And when you look at something like a Google search, for example, they don't make money off of every single search that happens on google.com. If I search for how tall is Tom Cruise, there probably isn't an advertiser that's buying that keyword, right? (laughs) They're really only making their money off of very specific, quote unquote, monetizable or searches with commercial intent, i.e. men's raincoats or like, you know, best hot sauce brands or, you know, Google's case car insurance, New York City, or, you know, things of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at product specific searches, which is a huge part of Google's business, Amazon actually has more product specific searches and product type searches than Google does happening over their sites. And other retailers, you know, different surveys will show different results. Other retailers like Walmart and Target also see a large amount of consumer search data happening on these sites. So this is something that Amazon was really first in, uh, you know, capitalizing on and monetizing. These are highly monetizable searches. Brands will spend a lot of money to appear, you know, higher in search results where people are actually going to buy, right? You're kind of getting as close to the buy as possible. So this has been a huge business for them. And that's really what's driving, you know, almost all of this growth. It's the growth in Amazon retail, but also brands recognizing that, hey, this is a huge opportunity for me to spend some of my ad budget or some of my, you know, in-store trade you know, or shopper marketing budgets to help guarantee sales on where more consumer searches are happening for products than really anywhere else. And you mentioned that the other 10%, the kind of Twitch uh, portion, if you will. So it's Twitch and premium video. Yeah. Just to be clear, it's, it's right. Yeah. Right. So IMDb TV, Twitch, live sports and network and broadcast apps available via Fire TV now reach 120 million monthly active viewers. Uh, something I was reading. That's the same number as YouTube TV viewers that we talked about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The number they reported on back in, in December. On top of that, so Mr. Adams of Marketing Dive was saying starting next year, Prime Video will be the exclusive broadcaster of Thursday Night Football in the most significant bet uh, the NFL has made on streaming to date. And then also noting Amazon earlier in July announced a multi-year licensing deal with Universal Filmed Entertainment Group that will make Prime Video the exclusive subscription video platform for the studio's live action films in the US, including the upcoming Jurassic Park Dominion starting 2022. He says, with this deal, IMDb TV will be the first advertising based Based streaming service to secure a major studio network window, which traditionally goes to broadcast or cable networks, is what Amazon was saying in their earnings. What do you make of this portion, the digital video portion? So when you look at Amazon's digital video business, I said it's about 10% or so of their overall ad business, but it's going to grow rapidly over the next couple of years. So I really break it out in my head into two different parts. It's okay. Twitch, which is one bucket. And then it's Amazon Fire TV, which is the other bucket. Twitch is very much like a YouTube. It's a video streaming service featuring user generated content. You know, it's it's got to focus on kind of live streaming and video games, but they do a few other things and that's growing, right? The more interesting part in my mind is this Amazon Fire TV business. Now I didn't say Amazon Prime. I didn't say IMDb TV. I said Amazon Fire TV because I think the closest comp is Roku. And it's really the same exact business as Roku. These are the boxes, sticks, and smart TVs that Amazon sells that run this Amazon Fire operating system. 
And they're going out to content providers in the same way that Roku is and saying, hey, if you run ads and you want to appear on you know, our devices or devices carrying our operating system, you need to give up a cut of your ad inventory. And which is exactly what Roku does. Roku is the number one in the US. Amazon Fire is the number two, and they're not that far behind. So they do have a ton of sway in the space. They've also launched IMDb TV, which is their free ad supported streaming service, which is comparable to the Roku channel, but also Pluto or Tubi in that it's free ad supported content generally has, you know, some pretty good movies there and they can promote it via their home screen on their devices. Mm -hmm. And this is growing pretty rapidly and they're able to, they've really been able to grow a very, very significant nine figure ad business off of this. And it's probably going to go to a billion dollars in the next couple of years easily. They've started doing licensing deals with, you know, the NFL. So they now have one night of, you know, exclusive uh, NFL football in the U.S. And I believe actually Thursday night football past couple of years has been the number one rated TV program of any sort during the week. Mm. I may have my numbers slightly off on that, but it's um, very, very popular. It's up there. So it's it's not maybe the same content as, you know, your Sunday afternoon games, which I personally love. I can't do anything else on Sundays during NFL (laughs) season. Until the Jets start losing, and then you know it's Again, I'm done. Week one, week one. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know they have an, <laughs> they have an exciting team this year. They have you know Zach Wilson. Yeah, in could and, be. You know, could we'll be. see. Well, but uh, <laughs> um, so Joe Mandis of Media Post was noting the Wall Street mm-hmm. analysts now estimate that the shareholder value of Amazon's advertising business is worth nearly five times as much as its retail business and is poised to overtake its AWS web serving business as the most valuable part of the company. So basically, as a BMO capital markets, they broke down the share of Amazon stock value. They think 46% of the value from Amazon comes from AWS, 44 comes from advertising, just 10% comes from retail. As we talked about Eric, 7% of the actual dollars are coming from advertising at the moment. That's Mm -hmm. gone from about 4% at the start of 2018 to about 7% today. If you look at AWS, even though it's doubled in the last two years in terms of how much they make, the share hasn't really gone up too much. In your opinion, where do you expect to see that Amazon advertising, that that 7% share, where's that going to get to in terms of how valuable that portion is for Amazon? You know, ultimately, when you look at their advertising business, it is a different line item, but it is like almost all of it is directly tied to the retail business and the remaining 10% that isn't is still either currently using or will likely use in the future Amazon shopper data to help target and, you know, measure these ads as we move forward. So everything's kind of integrated, right? But one of the analysts who I really like who's independent is Ben Evans. And he has a great write-up on Amazon's ad business saying that, you know, depending on how you view the margin profile on Amazon advertising, they don't break out Amazon advertising separately from, you know, on a PL standpoint. Yep. They do for AWS, so we have visibility into that. But likely this is contributing just as much, if not more, profit for Amazon than AWS is. And likely, if it isn't now, it's growing a lot faster and will in the future. The major question Mm -hmm. in my mind, though, is for every dollar that a consumer spends on Amazon right now, sellers and brands who are active on Amazon are spending, you know, about four to five cents or so on ads targeting consumers on Amazon.com. The question is, how much will that rise over time? And Mm -hmm. we're assuming it will rise. Um, I've seen a Goldman study that suggests that for CPG, large CPG brands specifically, that share likely will actually rise to about 10% or so for their entire online sales. Okay. So there's still, you know, we're kind of in a gray area in terms of how exactly this is going to play out, but there's a lot of room for this to grow. And ultimately, past couple of years, the primary spenders on Amazon have been the th- uh, three P sellers, who a lot of them are based in China. This is an established practice in Chinese e-commerce where someone like Alibaba makes most of their money in revenue actually off of ads or a significant portion at least. So we don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but it will show really, really strong growth as we move forward over the next couple of years. When would you expect Amazon to explicitly break out Amazon ad revenue? I mean, is it getting to the point now where it's, you know, it's bigger than their physical store sales? It, it's, you know, about as much as, as they make in subscription services business, their prime business. It's over half that of, of AWS. Do you expect to see that in the next couple of quarters? Not in the next couple of quarters, probably in the next couple of years. Okay. You know, this is something that 
it's so tied to their retail business that they are making decisions on the two together. And uh, Amazon did go through a pretty big change in their financial reporting a couple years back to reclassify, you know, some payments that suppliers were making to them for, you know, better, you know, appearance in search results. Um, they reclassified that from like a contra, you know, a reduction in cost of goods sold to ad revenue. So like they have gone through some changes in their financial reporting. I, I mean, this is a really tough question in general. Mm -hmm. I don't think they will in the near future. They probably okay. will in the long term, but they also do have a new CEO. So maybe he will change up some of the reporting. We've seen that with Google where yeah. they got the new CEO and they started breaking out YouTube. They started breaking out a Google cloud product separately and even going into a little bit more detail into the profitability yeah. of the cloud product. So I would assume that would happen. It just went. Interesting. Uh, what do we expect to see from Amazon advertising wise in Q3 and Q4 of this year? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be continued growth. Obviously, when you look at, you know, the entire digital ad market and the entire ad market, Q2 was the absolute bottom of the market. So we're expecting that everything's going to decelerate so that 88% growth rate will likely be lower in Q3 and Q4. We just don't know how much. Um, Amazon's in a bit of a weird position because you know, you have some like Google who showed a decline in Q2 of last year, and then very quickly recovered. Amazon didn't show decline. They continued to grow really strongly. It's just a question. They probably won't decelerate much off that 88% growth, to be honest with you. Um, okay. I, I, I know that this came in a little bit higher than our estimates for Q2. So we're updating this in a, another month or two. So we'll have okay. more answers then. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, so yeah, as we mentioned, 11% share of the digital US digital ad revenue pie this year, 11% as compared to Facebook's 25% uh, in second place and Google in first place with 29%. Amazon is continuing to add uh, share though, 11% this year. Uh, it will get to 13% by 2023. And then it will be pretty much exactly half of Facebook and almost exactly half of Google as well at that point. Peter Adams of Marketing Dive noted that, quote, the company, Amazon, said it introduced 40 new features and self-service capabilities to its Amazon advertising portal in Q2. For example, a regional sponsored product campaign creation feature, access to educational marketing resources through its partner network, and simplified creative asset management tools as well. They also noted opportunities for brands on its streaming properties and platforms like Twitch, close quote. That's all we've got time for for the first half of the show. It's time now for the halftime report. Eric, a couple of takeaways uh, from you, please, sir, from Amazon advertising in Q2. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, this is really strong growth. It was expected. And so much of their ad business is tied directly to their retail business. So it's going to kind of lag a little bit, if that makes sense. Yep. But over time, the media properties, you know, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch will become a little bit more prominent in that mix and grow rapidly over time. That's it for the lead story. Time now for In Other News. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Vtex. Retail's next competitive threat may come from a business model or channel that didn't even exist a few months ago. This modern dynamic requires companies to adapt quickly, pivoting business seemingly overnight, something traditional commerce platforms just can't support. There's a new enterprise commerce platform on the rise, one that's fast, flexible, and doesn't require nine months and a million dollars to get up and running. Go to vtex, vtex.com slash emarketer to learn more. Folks, we're back today in other news. Twitch is experimenting with a new ad format. Amazon was just fined nearly a billion dollars. And we check in on Roku and Tubi. Story one, video live streaming giant Twitch is experimenting with a new ad format for streamers. Stream display ads is what they're called. They shrink part of the viewing window down and have the display ad flash up for 10 seconds at the bottom of the screen. Uh, another version of the display ads takes over the left side and the bottom of the screen around the viewing window, temporarily shrinking the viewing window and moving it into the top right-hand corner of the screen. It's still pretty large, so it doesn't take over the whole thing, maybe 50% and the rest to the ad, roughly. You are still able to see and hear the person and streaming during the ad. Um, so you still get the audio from the stream. If you watched uh, NFL recently, Eric, is, I know you're a football guy, people might have seen this kind of ad appear during timeouts or game stoppages. Um, I'm forgetting which broadcast had this, but I've seen a few of them there. The ads can't be skipped or closed. 
Twitch promised that for now, at least, there won't be more than eight of these per hour. With the NFL, they, they came on TV, not through, through streaming, at least the ones I saw. Anyway, Eric, what do you think about this new ad format? Great. So ultimately, there has been a trend to create more, or I should say, less disruptive ad formats in premium video content. Uh, I'm thinking of Hulu pause ads, things of that nature. Obviously, YouTube has been doing something very similar uh, for quite a while with pop-ups you know, in the player. This is part of a larger trend. The one thing I will say really stands out to me is this seems to be desktop only. I may be incorrect on that, but Twitch does scream and does seem to be a lot more desktop heavy than basically every other video platform I can think of where everyone's either becoming completely CTV or is very, very mobile, like some of the social video um, companies like a, a TikTok or something like that. So they're going in a little bit of a different lane. Yeah, my initial reaction was uh, that they are they they do seem like they're going to be less disruptive than a, a pre or mid roll ad take over everything. However, when I saw them on the NFL broadcast, I was initially kind of annoyed. I felt like they were trying to kind of advertise at every opportunity, and I thought, wait, you're not even going to wait until the conventional, the traditional break to advertise. You're just going to throw that out there oh. during you know the middle of a timeout or something. So a bit annoyed, but then you know over time maybe I'd come to to get used to them, knowing that I can still see what I want to watch as the ad appears around it to be fair espn and a lot of the other tv networks have been doing something similar for a very long time so it's Mm -hmm. not it's not completely new yeah story two amazon was just fined 880 million dollars by the eu privacy regulators from luxembourg's data protection authority cnpd since amazon's european headquarters are located there amazon is being accused of breaking the continent's gdpr privacy rules notes insider intelligence associate analyst mark degurin The ruling stems from a 2018 class action complaint by a French advocacy group, notes Mark, uh, which alleged that Amazon doesn't have consent under GDPR to use shopping data for ad targeting. This close to $1 billion fine makes it the largest privacy fine in EU history. Amazon has also been asked to revise certain business practices. Amazon will appeal the whole situation. Eric, your thoughts? Ultimately, data is becoming a really tough issue. When you look at one of the big trends, In the broader industries, retailers using their own shopper data to help brands target ads. This may be something that isn't, you know, okay under EU law eventually as well. Yeah, until this Amazon case, Eric, uh, the highest fine under GDPR rules was about $660 million, a fine uh, that Google had in 2019. That makes this fine 14 times larger, one four times larger than that previous record. Uh, Mark Deguren, uh, analyst, associate analyst here at Insider Intelligence, was noting for context, Luxembourg's fine would represent roughly 4% of Amazon's profit just the profit, 4% of the profit, $21 billion in 2020, and merely 0.2% of the $386 billion in sales per the Wall Street Journal. Story three, Roku's stock fell nine points last week. That's because its streaming hours have fallen and Roku account growth missed analyst expectations, notes Insider Intelligence Principal Analyst Jeremy Goldman. Roku accounts came in at 56 million. Analysts had been hoping for about a million more. Meanwhile, Fox's AVOD, Advertising Video on Demand Streaming Service Tubi, posted nearly 1 billion hours of total viewing time in Q2, a bit of a landmark milestone for the company. Eric, what has been your reaction to the Q2 results of both Roku and Tubi. Well, and, and to be clear, uh, Roku's viewing hours declined sequentially, but we're still up about 20% or so year on year. So it's still mm. really strong growth for the industry. This is compared to you know TV, which is showing declines from 2020 year over year. So it's still really strong. What I do want to make mention of though, is that something like a Roku, which is a very large service, just like Netflix or Hulu, might start to see a little bit of seasonality in their viewership trends instead of kind of this up and to the right growth. Mm. Just because they're becoming large um, and they're running into some, you know, just basic consumer habits, if that makes sense. When you go from Q1, which is the winter, into Q2, which is the spring and summer, people like to spend more time outside. The other thing, of course, too, is that we are seeing vaccines get in wide deployment. So that could also be putting a you know, a little damper on growth in terms of how much time people are spending watching TV, which if you ask me is probably a good thing. People need to get outside a little bit more. (laughs) Safely, of course, safely, but. Yeah, any thoughts on Tubi at this point? (sighs) Tubi and Pluto are, you know, their growth is quite frankly incredible over the past couple of years. 
with Pluto projecting a billion dollars in ad revenues, which is about a year ahead of schedule compared to their last guidance and our previous estimates for March. Tubi is right behind them. One's owned by Viacom, the other's owned by Viacom CBS, the other's owned by Fox, but very similar services. There's a huge, huge opportunity for growth there, both in terms of viewership and ad revenues. So we've got time for for this episode. Thank you, Eric, for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, mate. Thanks to Victoria. She edits the show. And thanks to everyone for listening. We'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, for the Behind the Numbers weekly listen and new market podcast made possible by VTEX. Mm-hmm.